Let's take a quick look at a print and play game designed by one of my favorite game designers, Elizabeth Hargrave, and it's her print and play game, Tussie Mussy. Tussie Mussy. I don't know how to say that without it sounding weird, I'm sorry. Before I explain Tussie Mussy, I just want to read the little explanation that comes with this fantastic little instruction booklet of what Tussie Mussy is. Tussie Mussies exemplifies the Victorian custom of assigning meaning to the flowers that friends and lovers exchanged. Inspired by the ideals of elegance and discretion, these bouquets were carefully made to convey subtle messages to their recipients. Now you can choose the right flowers to make a winning Tussie Mussy of your own. So, Tussie Mussy, the setup is really, really quite simple. You just get all the cards together and shuffle them up really good. You can play with two to four people. It takes about 30 minutes, and so it's a really quick, easy game to learn with some pretty fun mechanics in it. So, on your turn, starting with the first player, you will draw two cards from the deck and look at them. Only the person who drew them should look at them. Then you're gonna see either, you're gonna see the type of flower that it is, you're going to see whether it has a heart or not, not all of them do have hearts, and then there's a text on the bottom that may have some conditional points for you, may have some actions that you take before scoring, and then right below that you can barely see is actually the meaning behind that particular flower. That's not essential to the game, it's just really cool. So you'll look at the two, you'll decide which one you want to display face up and which one face down, and offer it to the person on your left. That person is then going to choose either the face up one or the face down one without looking at the face down one. Once they've chosen, they'll put, place the one that they chose to the right of all other cards. Let's place it right there right now. And you get the other card and place it to the right of all other cards. Then the person to your left does the same thing. Looking at two cards, reading what they do, deciding which one to display face up, offering it to the person to their left. The person to their left will pick, put it to the right, then they'll take the leftover one put it to the right of all other cards, and play will continue. Eventually, you're gonna look like this. You've gone one round through, and you're back to the first player. Everybody has two cards. Now the first player goes again, and then after choosing, offers the cards to the person on their right. So we're switching directions. Oops. So the person on the right chooses, and remember, you always put that flower to the right of all other cards, and you go one more way around. So at the end of the second round, this is about what it's gonna look like, and we're gonna do what's called scoring. First, every player is gonna take any unrevealed cards, these are called your trinkets, and pull them down just so we remember they were trinkets. That matters because some cards give you points for trinkets, and some give you cards for your bouquet. This is the bouquet, the face up flowers. Once you've pulled your cards down to note that they were trinkets, you're then going to flip it over and score it using first taking any actions that might be displayed on the card that say before scoring, such as the marigold, which says before scoring, you must discard one of your other cards. So you will have to choose one of these cards to discard before you score your final points. Then after everyone scores their points, you do two more rounds and at the end of three rounds, you find out who wins. I also need to point out once you've chosen a, a face down card and add it to your bouquet, you can look at that. You just can't show anyone and you won't flip it up until the end of the round. And so there's a number of different cards that have a number of different synergies that might help you in certain ways. And so you're just doing your best to offer two cards, one that you would like and one that you don't like, so that your other person takes the one you don't like and you get the one you have. So there's a little bit of social deduction happening. I think it's a fantastic game. When we played this a couple days ago, we had so much fun reading all of the meanings on your card and what kind of message was being sent to us. For example, this says, I will always be true. We are happy friends. This is true love. I am innocent. Sounds a little bit horrifying if you ask me. Tussie Mussie is a fantastic game by the fantastic designer Elizabeth Hargrave. I'm a huge fan, and I think this is a perfect example of what we're trying to do with Affect, is have a really fun game that if you're paying attention, will teach you something about something.